everybody who wants to get vaccinated by the end of September. Be south. The Prime Minister needs to stop hiding behind jurisdictional excuses and do everything necessary to vaccinate everyone. We live in a country of nearly 38 million people. To vaccinate everyone is going to take a colossal effort. So will the Prime Minister start showing leadership by committing today that the federal government will fund federal vaccination sites across this country to vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible? Yes. Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, unlike the NDP, apparently, we understand Canada's constitution and respect provincial responsibility on health care delivery. We have worked hand in hand with them from the very beginning uh, to deliver vaccines uh, for Canadians. We are moving forward on supporting uh, the provinces as they vaccinate and as we brace for the big lift, the moment in which tens of millions of vaccines will be arriving in Canada and we're going to need to work very quickly to vaccinate everyone. We will be there for Canadians as we have from the beginning. The Honourable Member for Abbotsford. I believe you're on, I believe you're on mute. Uh. There we go. Well, thank you. I just want to remind everyone about one inch, not too far down, because then we don't have, then we all have to strain to hear the answer. And I, we all want to hear the answer. The Honourable Member for Louis Saint Laurent. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Canadians want to work. Unfortunately, last month was a bad month for Canadian workers. 213,000 workers in Canada have lost their jobs. It's not just a number. We're talking about fathers who've come home and had to tell their families, I've lost my job. Mothers have had to do the same things. Young people who just joined the labour market have just said, no, it, I didn't work out. They had to turn to unemployment. And the government it has uh, been admired in the vaccine crisis. Now it's the same for jobs, what it is doing to help these unemployed workers. Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to say that today we have had a good report from an international group which believes that the Canadian economy will reach 4.4% growth this year. I agree with my honourable colleague that we must support workers and the unemployed, and we can do it by voting for C14. We must do it. We need to pass this legislation. They need this help. The honourable member for Louis Saint Laurent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know that the Minister of Finance was long the Minister of Foreign Affairs, and she must know that Canada is behind the rest of the world when it comes to the G7. We have the highest unemployment rate. That's the reality. We're far behind the UK, which has barely 5% unemployment, to US 6%. We're almost at 10%. At the same time, the Minister is saying, yes, it's going to happen. The OECD says things are going to go better. And Canadians want concrete actions. Now, what is the government's plan to put Canadians back to work? The Honourable Deputy Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I must be clear that I was speaking about the International Monetary Fund, which is another international organization, which had positive words for what our government is doing with regard to the unemployment rate now. I must say that 71% of workers who lost their jobs during the crisis have already recovered it now. It's much better than we've seen in the U.S. Mr. Speaker, countries around the world are ramping up their vaccination pace because of the spread of the UK and South African variants. These variants are highly contagious and modeling, uh, it's very concerning to see what it could do. Um, we've seen the results of what the UK variant did in a long-term care facility in Barrie and the uh, South African variant has been discovered in other places in the country. Is the Prime Minister concerned that our slow pace of vaccinations in Canada has left Canadians vulnerable to a potentially larger third wave due to the variant? And if so, what's he doing about it? Honourable Minister. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, we share the member opposite's concern about the effect of variants getting hold in any Canadian community. And that's why we've worked so diligently with provinces and territories to support them in all of their efforts to contain the virus, including sending in additional support to uh, particular settings like the one that she mentioned with Canadian Red Cross to uh, help ensure that we are doing a thorough job containing those viruses. Mr. Speaker, this government will stop at nothing to protect Canadians and to support provinces and territories in their essential work. The Honourable Member for Calgary Knows Hill. Well, Mr. Speaker, the best way to protect Canadians against the variant is with a vaccine that we don't have right now. Now, other countries around the world have actually slowed and stopped their vaccination pro uh, programs that have been using the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine because of its uh, reported ineffectiveness against variants. Uh, as well, uh, Novavax, one of the can candidates that the government has signed contracts with to be produced here in Canada, also has severe concerns about the effectiveness against variants. Member for Kenora. Mr. Speaker, tourism operators in northwestern Ontario rely pri primarily on American clients to keep their business running. Given that we are well into February, they need to know now if they will have international visitors this summer or if they will lose another season. Some level of certainty uh, from this government, one way or another, is crucial for these businesses to plan ahead. So when will tourism operators know if fully vaccinated foreign nationals will be exempt from travel restrictions or not? Well, Minister... Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you to my colleague for his important question. I had the chance to have many discussions with tourism operators in Northern Ontario, along with many of my colleagues. And obviously, we know they're going through difficult times. But we've been there for them since the beginning of the pandemic. We've invested $10 billion through the wage subsidy, through the regional development agencies, through also the support to uh, fixed costs. And recently, we even launched the highly impacted sector support. And so, of course, it will be a pleasure to work with my colleague to make sure that these tourism operators have access to this very particular new support. Thank you. Honorable the Honorable Member for Port neuf jacques Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Commercial Rental Assistance Program is there to help our entrepreneurs who are paying dearly for this pandemic. There's a young entrepreneur in my riding who's a property owner and has paid taxes for over 10 years. In the spring, he got the subsidy, but since September, this tenant has been cut off. Do you know why? Because it's not arm's length. Can the finance minister correct this absurdity and support all entrepreneurs, including honest young Canadian entrepreneurs? The Honourable Minister. Thank you for the question, Mr. Speaker. I agree with my colleague that the rent assistance program is a very important program to support our Canadian businesses as part of our fight against the pandemic. With each and every program we have, for example, the rental assistance program, we have to be sure that the program is helping as many businesses as possible, while at the same time maintaining the integrity of the program. We're still trying to strike the right balance, and we will try to help all businesses who should be entitled and have needs 